streaming like, live. We are live. Do I need to say got it again? Yes, say got it again. Okay. Okay, so welcome everybody. I hope everybody is having a wonderful afternoon. My name is Caroline Hightower. I'm here at the Hampton Bay Allen Library and I have my coworker with me today, Diane Welch. Wave at them, Diane. Hello, and everyone. <laughs> we are very happy to have a local author here with us, Cindy Pons Newell. Yes. Say hello, uh, Cindy. <laughs> How are you doing? Doing good. Doing good. We're delighted to have you. I'm excited to be here. It's so we're we're going to hear all about Cindy and her writing and her new book that um, and how to get it. But um, and if anybody is watching at home and would like to ask questions, I will periodically be looking back onto our Facebook page. And if you have a question, please put it down in the comment section and I'll make sure to ask Cindy for you. So um, just to kind of get started off, uh, Cindy, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Um, I live in Anson County. I've lived here all of my life. Um, this, the room that I'm in now is the room that my mother was actually born in. So I, I didn't get far from home. <laughs> I have three children and I have my first grandbaby on the way. Congratulations. Uh, <laughs> That's wonderful. And thank you. Oliver is due in January. So that is, I'm so excited. Oh, wow. Yeah. I've been writing um, 2012. Um, that was when I wrote my first novel. I wrote it during Christmas vacation while the kids were out of school and I could concentrate. And um, I really, I just wanted to tell a story and I had no idea that people would actually like it or want to buy it. And so they encouraged me to write a second book. And then before I knew it, I had wrote several. So it's just, I do it for fun. I had someone ask me today how much money I make and I kind of laughed. <laughs> Not <laughs> enough. <laughs> I, I have, I tell everybody that asked me, do not write to get rich or famous because it ain't going to happen, <laughs> right? Because you have a story to tell and because you want to share with others what you've experienced. That's wonderful. Did you write as a child? I did, actually. I remember um, when I was in elementary school, when we would have writing assignments, I was always so excited because that was something I knew I could do well. And I remember in maybe eighth grade, um, I started writing a novel. And um, I guess I just gave up on it. I don't know. I don't remember. But I remember some of my character names from that. But um, that got lost many, many years ago. So I have, you know, <laughs> that might be a story to tell later. Mm -hmm. There you go. So how many books have you written so far? Um, let's see, I have um, Don't Say Her Name. That was my first one. And then The Kept, Attached, One Grave Secret, Two Grave Mistakes, Winter's Rage. And then I've written one novel under a pen name. So I have seven total. Oh, wow. So are you constantly writing? No. In fact, this was, I'm actually writing one now and I'm kind of stuck. I'm not sure where I want to go with it. I've never had that happen to me before. So this one is, um, it's just, it's, it's a struggle right now. Hopefully after graduation, I'll be able to finish it and move on to my next one. Cause I have a, I don't have the idea. My boyfriend gave me the idea for a really good novel. So I'm looking forward to writing it too. Mm -hmm. So do you think like when ideas come to you, you said you're in the middle of one novel. Mm -hmm. Would you like stop there if you're stuck and go into another one and come back to it or you have to finish it? I have to finish it. And usually I finish, like I sit down to start writing and that's all I do for about a week, maybe two weeks. I, nothing else gets done in my house and you know the kids used to laugh and say that they were neglected while mama was writing because they had lots of frozen pizzas <laughs> I mean I, I just when I get the idea I just go with it and I can't stop but with uh, but with taking the classes on campus it has really slowed me down so Cindy you can you did is, is a two-week period, is that usually a time? Can you complete a book in that length of time? Usually. Mm -hmm. Wow, that's that's amazing. It, so it, the, the, the ideas start and then they just flow and you right. just, you mm -hmm. just, 
Well, that that's wonderful. I have actually laid in bed at night trying to fall asleep and come up with an entire novel. <laughs> I mean, I just, I have trouble sleeping. And so I lay there thinking of ideas. And that was the one that I'm right now is called Run the Rabbit. And I came up with it while I was trying to fall asleep one night. Well, that's great. Um, and uh, you're self published? I am. I self published through Amazon. Okay. So could you talk to us a little bit about that process? Like if somebody's interested? Sure. Well, once I. <laughs> The first thing that I highly recommend if someone is looking to write is to find a good editor ahead of time. Um, I found mine through Facebook and she is excellent. Um, her name is Regina Mitchell Jones. I highly recommend her. She's excellent. Um, paying for editing is worth it for me because I learned the hard way with my first novel that if you don't have good editing, it slows the process down immensely. Um, once I got the book completed and I submit it to Regina, she does my editing and then sends it back to me. And then I start on a cover and there, I'm not sure if Amazon does it, but I used to publish through create space and create space sold out to Amazon. So I'm not sure that you can still do it this way, but I know that at one time you could actually um, produce your own cover through a some kind of link that they had available I never used it um, but the person that designed my last book cover um, she did an excellent job and it didn't take her long at all um, her name is Annabeth Castillo um, and I found her through Facebook as well but um, once the manuscript is edited and sent back to me then I can go through it and I either accept the changes that Regina has made or I, you know, make my own corrections, whatever. And then you just, all you have to do is create an account on Amazon and upload your manuscript. That's, the, that's the, fascinating. So how, so how did you, you, you found them, you said just, you found them on Facebook, what, just inquiring as to editors and to those who, illustrators who do, do the cover pages. Yeah, and I found um, at one time there was a thing where I don't know who started it, but um, they were um, encouraging you to like other authors' pages and anyone related to to the book writing process. So I just went through. I was getting a lot of likes from from my author page, so I was returning the likes. Oh, okay. And um, I think I may have just made an announcement on my page one day. I'm looking for an editor and you know, anybody that's up, you know, interested, anyone that would be willing to work with me, please let me know. And that was how I found Regina. Okay. I've never met her in person, but she and I have texted so many times and she has worked with me. I mean, she's amazing. Well, that's, that's good information to know. Mm -hmm. So you want to tell us about the book, about your book that has just come out? Well, sequel. Two Grave Mistakes is the sequel to One Grave Secret. Um, have either of you read One Grave Secret? I just finished. Tell me what you thought. <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of, I, I finished on Saturday and I wish I had had it probably like around Halloween. That would have been a great Halloween read. Mm -hmm. But it's, it takes, I mean, it was, it was extra interesting because it takes place here in Anson County. So a lot of the places you mention, you know, you, you're right there where it's all happening. Mm -hmm. But it was um, it was interesting because like the the main character, you just you really you want them to get got get you know you want them to find them and and solve this whole up. problem. <laughs> <laughs> well, Freddie Lee is a very disturbed young man. Yes, and, very disturbed. And I've had some people tell me, my own mama will not read this novel. She knows the story and she re has refused to read it. And that's fine. It's not for everyone. And if you have a weak stomach, I certainly do not recommend it. 
Um, it is sick and twisted. And my own children have told me that they have wondered if, if it's safe to even sleep in the same house with me. <laughs> but um, it's funny that you said that because um, while I was writing the first novel, One Grave Secret, my favorite character was Ellen. Yes. And um, she was my hero, you know. And, but by the time I got to the second novel, I didn't want Fred Lee to get caught. He ended up being my all-time favorite character of all the books I've ever written. Wow. So I don't want to give you any spoilers because, you know, there, I struggled um, with the ending of that one. And I have actually been thinking about a third one. Um, but I'm, I'm still kind of, I'm not sure on it. Because sometimes you just have to let go. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Um, we understand. I don't, I don't want to like give anything away if, in case people haven't read the one that I just finished. But I wonder, and if it's in the second book, don't give it away to me so it doesn't ruin it for me. Mm -hmm. But you mentioned in in One Grave Secret that his mother, you kind of briefly mentioned that she also, you know, has this thing where she hears a voice. Mm -hmm. So does that play further into it doesn't no um in fact i don't i think that um his mother's name was carolyn yes I, I was thinking that that's my mom's name so that's why i went with that um i try to name everybody in my family at least you know space out through all of my novels i have every family member <laughs> but um she i wanted to bring out the the, I guess it was important for me to be able to show that what he had was a mental disorder and he he inherited that from his mom if that makes sense mm -hmm. but, I wondered if it was a, a mental disorder I mean I, I assumed it was but I didn't know because I even though I haven't read any of your other books I knew that you kind of um, <laughs> well I just learned about you <laughs> <laughs> this is my, my first book but um I knew that you did some ghost stories mm -hmm. so I wasn't sure if if it was a mental illness or if this was like a possession it um it is a mental disorder okay yeah I never went down that road with um demonology or possession or anything ghost-like for this novel um but I mean and I was surprised at myself for enjoying it as much as I did. And when I first wrote One Grave Secret, I had planned to use a pen name because I knew that it was going to be very disturbing. And I really wasn't sure if I wanted it to be associated with my ghost stories. But then um, Regina, my editor, suggested that I go with it. And she said, you know, it's, it's in the same genre of horror. And, you know, you might be surprised at how many of your fans actually enjoy the same genre so that's when I wrote it I kind of just no one thinking in my mind that no one would know it was me anyway I just kind of let loose with it <laughs> <laughs> so you know but um the second novel is pretty much the same basic concept gotcha. but I don't think that his mom is mentioned again okay. brief, maybe briefly I, I can't remember so will we get to see Ellen again? Will she make an appearance? Ellen, you will see Ellen. You will see a lot of Ellen in this novel. Okay, well, cool. I wondered Ellen about that. Had, yeah, Ellen had a very hard struggle with Friendly. And as you can imagine, that left scars in, for her mentally. And so there's a lot of turmoil that she has to face. So two grave mistakes focuses on Ellen so Cindy will this will this be the last on this series I, I are you are you mentioned you have a couple more in the mind <laughs> uh, I, have, I have considered it because um I love Fridley and I don't want him to go away but at the same time like I said you know sometimes you know I don't want to end up with a Michael Myers kind of franchise going you know so right. eventually all good things must come to an end so you know I 
I don't want to give any spoilers, but at the same time, it's just not something that I'm sure I want to do. Right, right. Well, I understand. Well, of all of your books, which is your favorite? Which, you, which? Okay. And what, what was, what about that is appeals to you so much or it, was it the process of writing or, or the, as a story unfolded in your mind? I, I find that fascinating. I think um, for me, for one thing, it was the time frame because I really love learning about the 60s and and then, I mean, I was born in the 70s, but I'm not, you know, being able to write from that time frame is fun for me. Um, I love history. So anything that I can do in a different time frame is fun. But um, this story just kind of unfolded as I went. I really didn't know where I was going to go with it. I just knew it was something I wanted to try. Um, the, the thought processes were kind of really deranged for me because Fred Lee had some really deep thoughts that never got published. Um, he, um, he takes, he makes his women friends um, to all look the same. And at one time um, it was going to be that he <laughs> created a new person from different women I'll put together if that makes sense <laughs> and uh, my best friend Kim was actually um, reading the transcript for me as I would write a chapter or two I would email it to her she emailed, emailed me back and she said if you have him skin and victims I cannot read this <laughs> so I was like uh, okay because that was where I was going to go with it he was going to he was going to use skin from different victims to make one beautiful woman but um, she said that that was too much even for me. So I changed it. <laughs> so now it, it takes place in Anson County. Like, so I said that also kind of makes it, of course it's in the seventies, but still it's, you know, all the, even here the library is mentioned. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. So um, do any of your other books take place in Anson County or? Um, the first novel, Don't Say Her Name, I actually used Anson County, but I spelled it backwards um, because for one thing, I wasn't sure if I had to have some kind of special permission to be able to use a real county name. I didn't know what kind of process I would have to go through. But then um, the, all of my novels are set in North Carolina. Um, I'm not I think attached to set in Anson County. Cindy, that's this is we've we've got your books that we have it here. We uh, you know we we want people to know they're here and available, and you have a readership here, and I think that's wonderful. You've been our guest before, and uh, the house on uh, the cover of Don't Say Her Name is it that in Ansonville? It is, and that's the home of Lisa Brown. Miss Brown, yes, yes. Um, you know it's so weird because growing up. I have um, several relatives buried in Bethlehem Cemetery, which is located, you know, you have to go down um, Bethlehem Cemetery Road and you go right beside her house. Mm -hmm. And growing up, we would go by there and I would make my daddy slow down so I could get a really good look at that house. And I never knew any of the owners. And when I found out that Lisa was the one who owned it, she and I started talking on Facebook some, and she invited me to come over. And I was so excited to get to go see the inside of the house. It was like I knew what it was going to look like before I ever stepped in. Um, but there's actually a ghost story behind the cover of that book, if you'd like to hear it. Sure. Um, my niece, Lauren, actually went and made pictures of the house for me. And after Lisa had told me that I could use it on the cover. So Lauren went and made a bunch of pictures. And then she came back by my house to show me. And as we were looking through her camera, I saw a lady standing in the window in some of them. And I asked Lisa about it. You know, these are good pictures, but maybe Lauren could come back another day when that lady's not home or you know maybe let her know why we're you know why she's there there was no lady there and um 
she swore there was no one home, but you could clearly see her on some of those pictures. Um, and Lisa actually told me that um, when her husband was still living, he had an oil painting done of the house for her as an anniversary gift. And the man that painted the portrait went and made pictures of it himself to use. And he called and asked, can you have the lady stay away from the window while I make my pictures? So yeah. I wasn't the only one who saw the lady in the window. I think that's fascinating. Yes, it is. Very fascinating. Um, so you have, you, you mentioned about thinking about writing under a pen name for One Grave Secret, but you didn't. You used your name, but you have used a pen name before for one of your series. Mm -hmm. So could you talk a little bit about why you decided to do that? Oh boy. Okay. So uh, the novel that I wrote under a pen name is um, written under Luna K. Gray um, and it is an erotic series and it is totally different from anything else I've ever written. Um, mainly I just did it as an experiment to see if I could do it and if people would actually enjoy it. Um, I've had several people say that they really liked it, but I should stick with serial killers, that that's where my <laughs> talent is. So. Um, but um, Alter Secrets is the name of that series, and it's three short stories, um, and you can actually download those onto Kindle um, individually, or you can order one paperback novel that has all three of the books together. Okay. So it was mainly just for fun. Mm -hmm. You think you'll write any more of those? Mm, I don't look to. No, I think I want to stick with serial killers. They're fun to write. <laughs> <laughs> and it's fun to be able to control what the characters do. You know, I have the power to either let Ellen live or kill Ellen off. I have the power to let Freddy escape or have him get caught. And it's fun for me to be able to, you know, because when I'm writing, it's like they become real people for me. And, you know, I do get attached to them. Mm -hmm. Some of them I can't wait to kill off. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you ever get like kind of creep yourself out while you're writing? <laughs> very much so, especially with my first one. Um, I wrote a lot during the night while the kids were asleep. They were all still living at home then and were still fairly young and so I did a lot of my writing at night while they were asleep and I would sit at my computer and get chills <laughs> wow so Cindy how can we uh how can we get this book for those those people who are interested in purchasing one right now it's available on Amazon um I haven't checked but it should be available on Barnes and Noble and Books a Million um all of my other ones are listed there. So I'm hoping that this one's there too. But um, I, like I said earlier, I have ordered some copies, but I haven't got them yet. So um, as soon as I get copies, I'll be able to, you know, sign them if somebody wants some sign. Um, I, I'm not sure what the price is online, but I plan to sell these for $20. Okay. Well, that's that's good to know, and we'll definitely get one here. But uh, but we appreciate you uh, meeting with us, and 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 we appreciate the interview. And it, uh, you did. We're we're excited about all the things that are going on in your life. Now you're you're in school right now, and you have some plans to what? Are you going into the teaching field or planning to? Okay. Um, I graduate in four weeks. Thank God. This semester has been absolutely awful for me. Um, <laughs> my dad was sick. Um, he was in really bad shape and I missed, um, I don't know, I want to say two weeks of school because of his illness. Um, and then my back went out with me and I missed another week because of that. And so trying to get caught back up has been really hard, but um, I'm getting there. And hopefully if I'm planning to graduate in December. I'm not going to say if, when I graduate. Um, I plan, I'm hoping to do some sub teaching in Anson Union in Stanley Counties to get an idea of what school system I like the most. But I'm going to be applying. And if 
I can get hired to teach. I'll take what I'm offered. I will not be picky. I just want to teach. I'm planning to teach high school English. Well, is your dad okay now? Yes, thank goodness. He is doing well, much better. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Thank well, you. we're excited for you. And, uh, and I think that's a good idea, getting into the school systems and kind of getting a uh, getting to net, you know, learning about them and choosing the one that's best, the best fit for you. <laughs> um, I, got, uh, I got a late start. Um, <laughs> I was um, full time at Wingate and um, my ex-husband and I decided to get married and it kind of, you know, I thought, why would I want to go to school now? I want to be a housewife. I want to take care of kids and be at home. And, you know, that was that was my dream. And so I dropped out of school. And after 21 years, our marriage ended and I was left penniless with no education, no experience. I, it was either sink or swim. So I decided to finish out my degree so I can support myself. And hopefully this is... <laughs> I've actually looked into um, editing and um, writing for magazines or newspapers, I'm, you know, but I've always wanted to teach. So that's my goal. Well, that's wonderful. And we're, we're proud of you. You're a busy lady. <laughs> but we thank you for taking time to come in with us today and, and share about your books and your writing. And, uh, and we're just excited for you and what, for what the future holds and all those books that are still in there to be written. <laughs> They're in there. And the one that I'm working on now is, um, it is also a serial killer thriller. Um, and it's kind of, criminal mind type if you've ever watched criminal minds it's it's kind of yeah. i think it would make an excellent criminal minds episode <laughs> so we'll see what happens if i can ever decide what these people are doing because right now they're just wandering around anson county with <laughs> with no clue where they're going <laughs> oh um, i'm looking at our facebook and we do have one comment is congratulations thank you and I don't see any questions yet, but I'm sure you can kind of watch our page and if people ask questions, you can maybe help them out and answer, or we can call you and ask you. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, thank you so much. This has been a pleasure and you're a beautiful writer. Thank you so, so much. I appreciate that. And very I, talented. I truly do feel honored that you asked me to do this. So thank you very much for giving me your time. Well, we're honored that you accepted and we wish you nothing but the best. You Thank take care. You. All right. <laughs>